Hello everyone! In this video, I'm going to be making a super handy and very simple to make tool, a slide hammer center punch. I made this one originally about 15 years ago and I love it. It makes a nice clear punch mark and it's way easier to control than the spring-loaded automatic center punches. Possibly the coolest thing about this one though is that I'll be giving it away. Keep watching the video to find out how you can be the lucky recipient. Let's talk about materials first. The punch body is 3 eighths of an inch or about 9 millimeters in diameter and 8 inches or about 200 millimeters long. I made it with 01 drill rod. This is an oil hardening tool steel that is very easy and very forgiving to heat treat with minimal tools. 01 is known by various names throughout the world, such as silver steel over in the UK. Of course, you can make this out of any hardenable steel. The rest of the parts are all brass, and for those, I'm actually reusing one of the 1 inch diameter blanks I used in my thread testing videos from a while back. Again, you can make these parts out of whatever's handy. This is a fantastic beginner project that's almost entirely done on the lathe with the exception of this hole for a roll pin. I did that with my mill, but it could easily be done in a drill press or even with a hand drill if you're feeling a little saucy. I'm starting with the punch point, which I cut at a 60 degree included angle. That's 30 degrees from the center line of the lathe. Once that was nice and pointy, I changed the angle of the compound to 15 degrees to cut a secondary angle. This gives a bit more visibility when lining the punch up with scribe lines. There's nothing critical at all about the length of cut or the angle for that matter. I just went with something that looked right. Once the point was finished, I turned it around and drilled and tapped the other end for a 1032 screw. That's roughly equivalent to an M5, but again, feel free to make this however you want. I started this under power on the machine so it would be nice and straight, but I finished it up by hand so I could feel what the tap was doing. I also drilled the hole slightly larger since it's tool steel, and even in a soft state it's tough to tap. Lastly, I drilled out the end about an eighth of an inch or three millimeters deep with the clearance drill to make sure the threaded end stop would sit tight against the end of the punch. For obvious reasons, I drilled the hole for the roll pin before I hardened the punch. I found the center first, and from there I just lined the spot drill tip up with the end of the angled cut by eye and moved over a suitable distance. Again, nothing critical. If you're doing this without a milling machine, it would be a good idea to drill the brass collar and the punch at the same time to make sure the holes line up. I'm just going to be hardening the tip of the punch, and to do it, I'll be using the same setup I've shown in some of my other videos. I have a can of canola oil here, which works well for this because it doesn't smoke as much as other commonly available oils. I have a small rare earth magnet stuck to the side of the can to see if the part is above the critical temperature. Once it's non-magnetic, I know I can dunk it. I didn't want the oil to be too cold, so I preheated it by warming up a piece of scrap steel until it was too hot to hold in my hand and chucking it in the oil. This helps keep your parts from cracking due to thermal shock. Then I just heated up the tip until it was a nice orange color, checked it on the magnet, and quenched it. To check the hardness, I used my hardness testing files, which I've shown off in other videos. These files are hardened to different points, from 40 Rockwell C to 65. If the part's scratched by a file, you know it's softer than that number. If the file skates across the surface, the part is harder than that number. Starting with the 65 Rockwell C file, it's immediately skating, so I got that part as hard as I possibly could. It scratched off a little of the black scale, but it didn't touch the metal. Now I need to temper it because this tool will be struck in the sense that it's a punch that will need to survive the force of an impact with metal. I tempered it in my kitchen oven, but before I did that, I used some Scotch-Brite to clean off the scale that formed when I heated the piece. Then I put it in the oven at 500 degrees Fahrenheit or 260 degrees Celsius for half an hour. That drew back the hardness of the part and gave it this lovely blue color, which I'll be leaving on there. Before I move on to the brass bits, let me tell you how you can become the proud new owner of this little doohickey. I'll be doing a drawing from my patron list over on Patreon on February 1st, 2022. 
Anyone who is a current patron at any level as of 5 p.m. Central Time on that day will be eligible, and I'll contact you through Patreon to let you know you won. If you're watching this after that date, don't worry. I plan on doing a giveaway over there every few months or so. Speaking of my patrons, I'd like to welcome my newest supporters, John S. Dilsaver, and joining at the Master Machinist level, Jehon Kanyanye. If you like the content I make and want to help support the channel like those two quite frankly lovely human beings, plus get the chance to win some sweet, sweet loot, head on over to my Patreon page. The link is in the description. I can get all of the brass pieces out of this threading sample I made in my high-speed threading video. If you haven't seen that, I'll put a link to it at the end of this video. I'm going to start with the end stop. I threaded this to match the tapped hole in the end of the punch. I started it by threading it on the lathe so the stop would sit squarely. Once the thread was established, I finished it up with a die so I could get threads as close to the shoulder as possible. You could, of course, just cut the threads with the die from the start. You could also just make this part as a little donut held on by a separate screw. Once it was done, I parted it off, faced off the other end, and moved on to the stop collar and the sliding weight. These two parts needed to be drilled and reamed to fit over the punch body, so I did them at the same time. For the stop collar, I turned it down to 5 eighths or 16 millimeters in diameter for about 3 eighths or 9 millimeters in length. This is where it'll get drilled for the roll pin. The rest of it will be the stock diameter, which is 1 inch or about 25 millimeters, and that will be a quarter inch or roughly 6 millimeters long. I reamed them for a slip fit so the weight will slide freely. The stock collar will be pinned to the punch body, so the fit really doesn't matter as much, but it only makes sense to make the hole the same size as the weight. While I parted the stop collar, I broke the corners with a file. Once that was done, the rest of the material will be the sliding weight. I just faced each end and broke the corners. Then I moved over to the mill to drill the roll pin hole in the stop collar. Again, if you're not doing this in a mill, I'd drill the two parts at the same time to make sure the holes line up. Now it's time to put everything together. I've started the roll pin and the stop collar to make things a little bit easier on me. When it comes to pressing in that roll pin, you have several options. The most accessible is just using a hammer to drive it in just like a nail. If you have an arbor press, that's a good option as well, but I know not everyone has one of those. You can also use your bench vise to press it in by squeezing it in the jaws. Once I had the pin pressed in, it was a little bit longer than the part, so I very carefully cut off the excess with an angle grinder. Then I just slid on the weight and screwed in the end stop. Let's see it in action. And there we go. That works really nicely. Like I said, there is nothing set in stone about any of these dimensions. My original one bears just a passing resemblance to this one, and that's not because I wanted to improve anything. I just couldn't find this one when I started making the video. If you do make one of these, I'd love to see your take on it. You can send a picture to me over on Instagram at Stuart DeHaro. If you have any questions or a topic you'd like to see me cover in a future video, leave those down in the comments section below. Hit that like and subscribe button if you think I've earned it, and if you'd like a shot at winning this bad boy, head on over to Patreon and join these wonderful people right here. You might also want to check out these other videos. On the right, I have a new playlist of all the projects I've made. I'll be expanding that one in the coming months. On the top left, I have my most recent video, and on the bottom left, I have the high-speed threading video I talked about earlier. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.